from us are our elder Nikki <laughs> to deliver the message today. <laughs> that we have a wedding this afternoon, right? Yes, a wedding. <laughs> so a wedding this afternoon. Um, Tiffany and Winston. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why like, a lot of people, yeah, they need to go there, support, and help out a little bit. I feel like I, sh I should sit down as well since we don't have that many. <laughs> that's, that's okay. But okay, let, this is a very casual Um, sermon, okay, because uh, it's ter uh, Tabernacle is next week, right, it's a good time to celebrate, so I want to talk about it, just like a families, okay, we get together and talk about Tabernacle and uh, get a little bit understanding about it so we can respond uh, right, so just, uh, I'm proud of myself of making this <laughs> type of <laughs> PowerPoint, <laughs> I'm not very creative person, but <laughs> I'm trying hard. Tabernacle. So we've been doing this for one month, two months, right? We like from the um, trumpets and then we have 40 days prayer, okay? And out of Japan, try very, very hard to translate those prayer into English. That Those are not easy prayer to translate. It. So uh, yeah, so this is the Feast of Tabernacle, just a little bit background, just a little bit background, okay? So can we do this, uh, read it together? Like three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord, your God, at the place that he will choose, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Passover, at the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, and at the Feast of Booths, Tabernacle. They shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. This is observed throughout centuries by Jewish people. They follow, they, they observe, uh, observe that. And it's in, it's, uh, yeah, they do that very faithfully because they know God will do things according to his calendar. So this is not a Jewish calendar. I would say it's rather the Lord's calendar. Okay, so th there are m three major feasts, okay? But, but literally, they, 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 you can break it down into seven. The first group, is, it happened in the first month. So it's the Feast of Passover, but actually it consists of three different ones, but all related. And the second, second group category is the third, happened in the third month. It's the Feast of Pentecost, okay? And then uh, in our church, we celebrate it, we observe that, and we explain things, and we prepare our church and all the members according to this calendar, because God does follow his own calendar, okay? This is no trivial thing that God will pick up a, a nation, a, a group of people, Israel, and give them a special calendar, so special that no other nations, a group of people follow that, but God do things according to his own calendar, okay? And then the third category is the seventh, it happened in seventh month, that's when the Jewish New Year started. We talk about it um, this few um, weeks, actually. So it's not like Chinese. We, we start New Year. All American people, we start from January, the first month. But Jew, they, they don't do the same thing. They start from the seventh month. Okay, seven is a special number for God. So they started from the seventh month. Okay, so the third group is the Feast of Tabernacle. And the Feast of Tabernacle um, has includes three different, independent, but related feasts. The first one, trumpets. I believe I preach on that day. Trumpets is when God say, hey, I'm coming, get ready. So from trumpet, we'll have certain things to do. And then the Feast of Atonement, which is Yom Kippur. We also mentioned about this. And then from Yom Kippur, basically after Yom Kippur, hopefully you, you deal with God and then you deal with your, your past um, problems and everything is settled. And then God can move on to, to bless us. So today we move, we'll move to the Feast of Tabernacle. Okay, so basic, this is the calendar. I break it down for you. So this year, the Feast of Trumpets, 
is September 30th. And then followed by that is the 10 days of all. So Jewish people and Christians, and we talk about this, I hope you also follow that, is that you use those 10 days, you prepare your heart. Did anybody t follow um, the, pray that, the prayer that Chuping sent out, or Ming sent out to the Venea, or to the family group? How do you feel? I would encourage you to do that. I, um, I, I don't know how, how to describe um, my feeling. I, I see visions. I didn't expect that. I thought God, God gave me visions and God tell me exactly saying that once you clear out through in those prayer, you align with me, you prepare a way so I can bless you. You know that God's heart, if you really know God's heart, he's like a good father. He has so many blessings. He has so many blessings. In the Bible, it says that every thought that God has for us is good. And he's prepared so many gifts, blessings. Sometimes it's like um, material thing. Sometimes just some insight or give you some wisdom so you can get around things or some strategy so you can, you can uh, experience breakthrough. There are so many gifts that God wants to give it to us, but they are transgression. They are sins. They are like inner oath. Sometimes done by us. Sometimes done by our, our forefather. And you say, okay, I didn't do that. It doesn't come. But in the spirit realm, there is certain spiritual law. Okay? So, so those things are there. So that's why God specifically called us, say, why don't you spend some time to pray those prayers and clean up those curses or those words against you or even your own words. Sometimes say, oh, I'm so sucks. I'm not good at anything. Those are like you. It's like you, 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 you curse yourself right there. So God wants you, want, I want me to deal, deal with that. So I spent 40 days. I follow, I follow the, uh, the prayer, 40 days, and then I continue. And I even send a few books to my friends and family, the books with uh, the prayer inside. I, I really feel a very, very different. I, I, somehow my, my faith grew, and I know very clearly that God will bless me this year. And I'm already seeing that, okay? Um, blessing including I feel very, very relaxed, and then things start moving around. I no longer need to strive. I no longer need to, like, be, be afraid or concerned too much. I just be there and trust in God and then just work on the transgression or anything, the curses that God revealed to me. There's one very key thing you've got to remember. You have to follow Father's turn, not your own turns. This is season to repent. Let's repent. This is season to celebrate. Let's celebrate. Okay? This is called wisdom. That is very, very important because he's much wiser. He knows things ahead, not us. So it's no good to say, oh, I feel like doing this, not like that. Okay? But I'm not threatening you guys, okay? <laughs> I'm just sharing my experience, and this, this is like encouragement. Okay, so after the 10 days of awe, then we'll go to the Feast of Atonement. And we talk about this. This is the time that God is saying that, okay, I'm going to review everything you have done in the past so I can decide what's going to come to you in the new year. Okay, so that's the Yom Kippur day. So the Yom Kippur is 24 hours, and then from the 10th to 14th, the Jewish people, they would use that time to build a tent. So then they move to the Feast of Tabernacle. It's a seven-day Sukkot. Okay, so the, this is a very brief introduction. So the Feast of Tabernacle, basically Sukkot means shelter, booth, or tabernacle. God want them to build a tent outside their permanent house. Doing what? To remember things. Okay, so Sukkah is often simply called the feast. Okay, it's about glory. Okay, it's about glory. So basically, remember, okay, three feasts. The first one is Passover. That's the yard, the courtyard of the, the, uh, the temple, the tabernacle, the, the Moses tabernacle. Okay, and then the um, Pentecost means God's provision. God will provide with everything. And then the third one is the Holy of Holies. Okay, so it's God's glory. Okay, so um, can we read this scripture together? 
on the last day of the feast, the, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this is said about scripture. Who believe in him were to be. Yeah. Okay, Jesus said this. This is a very famous scriptures, right? And Jesus said that in the, the Feast of Tabernacle. It's in the first two, if you go back. If you go to John 7 and the verse 2, it says, this is Tabernacle. And so that is the great day. This is the day, the day, and, and Jesus stood up, stood up and declared, I am the living water. So this day to Jesus and to the Jew is very important. So you are in the day, the feast. This is the very, very, the most important feast in, to Jew and to Christian. If you know, you can, if you can understand, you can comprehend the scripture meaning, then you, you would know. Okay, so this is what a, a Jewish people would do. And this is what uh, I would like all of us to think about it, to consider and doing the same thing. Okay, so from um, next Tuesday, the coming Tuesday, the 14th, we'll start a seven-day, the Jew will start a seven-day Sukkot. This is God's calendar. Basically, Jew is encouraged to do this. Remember their journey. Why? Okay, because they've been rescued from Egypt, from Egyptians. And then they, they, they wander around in the desert for 40 days. They experienced, they experienced God's presence and his provision and live in tents. Okay, so imagine, so that's why, that's why God wanted to build a tent, build a tent outside their permanent house and live there, eat there and literally sleep there and and live there by doing what? Because God wants his people to remember your past, your journey, so you can count all the miracles, everything that he has done. Sometimes we're so busy, okay, we, we, we actually don't remember, okay? So, um, yeah, I, I want to take you, like, go through this journey together. Maybe can we, can we just e spend a, f a few seconds to, to think about what happened in the, the past year, okay, and anything that God has done to you, like all the blessing or any major things. I think about it often, and I keep thanking God. Even I just came back from the 10-day uh, vacation. Even during the vacation, I keep think, thanking God. I'm not just trying to be religious. I just from my heart. Can you, can you recall anything? that you, you know this is God's grace and mercy on you in the past, like, 12 months? When I think about it, you know, early this year, I, I was in very, very, uh, uh, I, I wasn't, uh, okay, I was in a very um, bad shape toward the end of last year. I shared that in my sermon before. And then toward the, the end of last year, um, God told me, you need to, exp you need to go through some, deep healing and deliverance, even though I'm doing the inner healing. <laughs> but God said, you need to go, go deeper, okay? Even get delivered. You know, we have strong bondage. We can still go, about, go around saying, go to church. You, you even serve people. But inside you have fears, you have curses, you have self, self uh, limit thoughts in your heart. So I, I say, yes, God, I'm willing to. And then God started showing me, I, I met a, um, I, okay, I, I get to know a minister, a ministries, and then I start taking a class, um, nine lessons, transforming grace, that literally transformed me, okay? And then um, there are many shame, many lies, just, just left me after a few months, gradually, gradually. And from there, one thing leads to another. Then now I'm taking people to go through that. And I see lives getting transformed. Okay. And then this year, there are some, um, quite a few significant relationships being rebuilt or enhanced. So my joy, I'm so joyful when I spend time with them. And I keep talking to God. 
God, I cannot imagine how ha happy I am just nine months ago. I cannot imagine. I'll be so happy and so sa satisfied. So can we, can we think about the good thing that God gave it to us? Because that's the thing God wants us to do. And then also by thinking about that, God can use that to prepare our heart and faith so he can pour out his, his uh, more blessing on you. Bill Johnson recently said that favor will find more favor. Once you know you have favor, you live in the favor that you experience, then that will lead you to the next favor. Okay, so it's time you think about the favor you experience. Okay, so I'm not here to, to teach any like very um, uh, an awesome teaching or anything or sermon. Just I want to like, we, we all go through that and experience that. I think that's the most important thing. Okay, so let's just spend a, a little bit of time. Think about all the good things. And then you start thanking him. Can we? Then you can, you, if you think about something, something good that you want to give thanks to God, would you just say it out loud? We don't have too many people here. And we all know each other, I believe. So if you think about something, just say, hey, I want to thank God for this. to thank God for like um, give me the grace to he hear a very prophetic friend tell me just two days ago that what will be my next step thank you for giving me a clear vision I also want to thank God for, um, for uh, allowing me to meet uh, quite a few missionaries in my vocation by accident. I think um, I hear their story, and I, I, I was so encouraged by them. Father, I thank you for that. Who else besides Juping Lan and Nikki Tan?
thank you for the uh, Transforming Grace class, which helped me to find my Heavenly Father, not just in my head, but rather in my heart, and also I can experience Him on a daily basis. I'm so grateful. Okay, we can pra um, practice that more. I, I went to Vancouver for a few days. The, right now it's 20 degrees lower than here on a constant basis. So there are, I have so many things to, to give thanks for. For one, I, I, I got a chance to eat the, the, the best crab that I ever <laughs> ate. By, by accident, you know, I'm in a big, uh, new country and the SIM card does not work at all. Okay, so imagine, and it's extremely cold, extremely cold. And then just by accident, we find, it, it's expensive, but it's extremely good. So I, I'm eating it, I thank God, God, what a surprise that you give it to me. You really know how to treat your daughter, right? You know, th those are the, um, those are the, um, um, the, those are the things that really touch your heart. It's not just the crap. Rather, there is a father who really, really want to surprise you, want to treat you. And then right before, I, okay, I went to Seattle first to visit my sister. And then right there, she gave me a very, a, a very um, good coat, uh, a, just a jacket, a thick jacket. Without it, I will not be able to survive Vancouver because the, the coat I bring from California, it will not work. Believe me, I thought that's good enough. It will not work. Okay, so, so, so this Vancouver trip, I uh, we took many, many pictures, but I look the same because it's so cold. <laughs> I wear the coat every day. You don't know what I'm wearing inside. So without the coat, I won't be able to survive. But what I'm trying to say that when I, because I start giving thanks to God more right before this trip, because I notice, I notice his, like his finger, fingerprint everywhere in my life every day. That's why I can relax more. And I thank him. And I talk to him more and more and more. From there, favor finds favors. Favor will lead you to more favor. You don't need to strive. That's what I'm saying. So this year, Tabernacle, it's a time God called his people, including us, to remember all the good things he has done. Okay? And then from there, God doesn't have this... Um, security or identity problems. The reason he wants us to count blessing is that our faith, our heart will be more ready to receive more. You know, sometimes God show us, God, God is actually helping us. I remember it happened like two, three times in the past uh, three months. I, I, there are certain things happened, and I wish that would can happen this way. It, it didn't. So I said, God, how come? How come it didn't ha um, happen the way that I, I prefer? And then God said, hey, can you tell that I'm actually helping you? I said, no, you're not helping me. Okay, because that doesn't, it, 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 it developed in a totally different direction. And then since he said that he's helping me, so I think about it more, and I realized, oh, yeah, his, his way is actually much smarter than, than mine. 
Okay, so I'm saying this, once you're aware you have a very smart and kind and generous father by counting the blessing and remember the blessing, it will help you to recognize the blessing in the future. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you say, he's lucky, he's lucky all the time because he knows the secret to stay in the lucky condition. Okay, God wants us to be very, very lucky, all of us, not just special one. The fact is that God wants his children to be so lucky that the non-believer will envy us. Okay, one translation for the beatitude saying that blessed are those, blessed are those, the blessed. Actually, one translation translated into to be jealous of. People want to like envy you. How come you're so lucky? How come you're Christian? You don't do much. You're not nervous. And then somehow during like, like not, nothing harm will be done to you, things like that. That's God's heart. But sometimes it's us prevent him from blessing us. Okay, and our children as well. I forgot to tell you, in the past 40 or 50 days, I used to pray, not just bless myself. I start blessing my grandchildren, even though I don't have any yet. <laughs> and my daughter is about to marry. <laughs> but this is for the first time. You know, because... My family has uh, the spirit of death for, uh, for generations, actually. Spirit of death, it's very clear. In this particular period of time, the 40, 50 days, I'm working hard on those prayers. I come to God. God, I need those things to be cleansed from my history so that my daughter and other will be blessed. Okay, otherwise you live constantly under the, um, the threat. Okay. So, and, and I find myself, for the first time in my life, I start thinking about my, my future generation. Otherwise, I can only see my daughter. I never thought about my grandchildren. And even one prophet came here and prophesied, and I get offended, to, be tell, <laughs> to tell the truth. I said, what are you talking about? Prophesize over me. Why grandchildren or even great-grandchildren? Okay. You know, when you have the spirit of death, you don't see things. Okay, you, there are certain things you, 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 you won't be able to, to receive. Okay, and those repentance, those prayer will open up your eyes and you see hope. Otherwise, I will not pray for my, my grandchildren. I still remember that evening, I start praying the prayer and I say, Father, I also bring my grandchildren before you and I surprise myself. I stop there and say, hmm, how can I stop praying for my grandchildren? I pray for my daughter often, but not my next, well, I mean, um, grandchildren, okay? So what I'm saying is that when you pray, when you do things according to God's calendar, you respond to him, okay? And then God will just help you to clean up those roadblocks, okay? So I, I think I prayed the right prayer, very powerful one. Okay, so now it's the tabernacle. So remember him. Remember, thanks him. And so that, that will allow your face to grow. Your eyes will be open. Then you can see God's fingerprint. Then you can follow that. The miracle will start happen. Actually, I wouldn't say it's a miracle. It's there already. Just whether you will follow him to find it or not. Okay, God already prepared everything. So many gifts. Okay, so for... So in this season, in this few days, okay, God wanted the, his people to remember our journey with God, our journey, okay? And then, and then part of it is that you can see that God desire to live among them because the Israel people, they live in tents. But remember, they have like four directions. Each tribe, they will live around it. But in the middle of it, what is that? God's house. Right? It's God's tent. God lives there. God actually wants to live among us. Not just beside us. He wants to around. Okay? He wants to live among us. Okay? The second thing that we can eagerly anticipate God's glory to come back to us or to a friend or to your family. This is the season. Because like um, the, in the King, um, King Solomon in Second Chronicle, King Solomon Build a temple and dedicate to God on, the, on this particular feast. And God's glory filled the temple. And even the priests, they cannot stand still. 
Okay, so this is the day, the tabernacle, is the day that the Holy Spirit will come and visit us. And that's why um, Jesus spoke in John, uh, which chapter? John, and saying that this is the day and the, there will be living water coming out from you, right? That's, that, that points to this Holy Spirit. So remember those things, okay? And then also God invite all his people to invite guests to celebrate the harvest and to extend hospitality, friendship, and stories. It's funny if you go, go to, the, to do some Google and see those tabernacle. There are quite a few very, um, very, uh, <laughs> very funny, very cute, very um, different tents with different style, okay? And oh, the tent is meant to invite friends because this, the seventh month is when they have the harvest. So like you have watermelon, okay, then you have cucumber, and then we'll bring our harvest and go to certain pe um, particular person's tent, and then they will share. So this is for sharing, to share the story, to share experience, and to remember God together. And then the third one is to celebrate the fruits of the harvest and to rejoice, give thanks to God, okay? And then also give back to God. So feast time is also time that you can like make a special offering to God. Okay, that's what I did in the past, I don't know how many years, three feasts. I will, me and my husband will prepare a special gift to God. Yeah, special gift to God to say, God, thank you for the thing that you have given us. Okay. All right, and the fourth one is that be filled with the Holy Spirit through faith, joy, and thanksgiving. I think I said that already. Thanksgiving, counting all the blessings, will really help us to stay in the blessing cycle. Okay? All right. So... Talk about this year, 5780. This is, I don't know, okay, this is a pay mic, okay, P-E-Y. Okay, you know that all the, um, the Hebrew, the number, the letters, they all have different meaning. So this year, the coming year, actually, is the year of mouth, mouth, okay. What do you mean mouth? So this is a year of declaration, and this is a year to use our mouth to bless ourselves and others. And this is the year you want to use your mouth wisely. Wisely. Uh, in the past year, uh, past year is the years of eyes. Okay. And this is, you, you can do a, a, lot, a, a lot of uh, research if you want to on the Google, but I don't want to spend that much time on this. So basic, this is the year that you use your mouth to, to, to receive blessing and to bless others so that more blessing will come to you. Actually, God wants us to do that. I bless you, you bless him, and then he bless me, and then he, the, his whole house is full of blessing. Okay, a year of declaration, a year to your mouth to bless ourselves and others, a year to use your mouth wisely, wisely. Remember this. Okay, so, okay, I just want to do some, I want to make very practical. Okay, so this is just, oops. So this will give, give us one more chance to give thanks to God. Okay, this, does as a, this is just a simple prayer. You don't have to follow this, but something for you to, to begin with. So dear Lord, I want to begin my tabernacle with lots of thanksgiving. Okay, and then thank you for this and that. Can we try that? I have a few more um, PowerPoints to help you engage with God. So um, can we, um, can we like, if you want to see, it's okay, or you want to stand up. Like, when I pray, I like to walk around. Okay, just feel free. And then connect with Father and say thank you. I want to thank you this and that. Just like me, I thank you, thank God for the crabs. Actually, crab is just one of the good meals. I have many good, view, uh, good meals in Vancouver. <laughs> okay, so, so shall we do that? So can we? Turn on the background music a little bit. So, um, okay, so this is just you and God. Okay. So let, let's do this together. Just read this so you can take off from there. All right. So, dear Lord, I want to begin my tabernacle with lots of thanksgiving. And thank you for 
you're filling the gap. Just talk to him. Maybe even speak out a little bit to him. If you do that, actually you'll feel loved. You'll feel his presence more and more. I want to apologize, but I still want to invite you to to thank him by speaking it, speaking out. Can we do that? Just, yeah, just tell him in the public the thing that you want to thank him for. But I want to thank you for lift up, for lifting up the spirit of death from me and from all the relationships. I have with people. And thank you for removing the spirit of heaviness from my heart. Thank you for saving my life by sending friends and family to challenge me, to support me, to stand with me, to pull me through. And I thank you for saving me. Deeper on my 
Okay, let's move to bless yourself. We got to bless yourself is not a, a selfish thing. God wants us to be filled by His blessing. So, dear Lord, in 5780, please give me grace and strength to use my mouth wisely. Lord, I bless myself. Would you stand up? And then those are just the, um, some example for you, okay? You, I'll give you some time, a little bit of time. Why don't you start blessing yourself? Okay, you can bless your health, your emotion, your mind, your family, your finance, your job, or anything that's applicable to you. And also, you start bless yourself with like a good, the right relationship with God and people. How about we do that? Okay, bless yourself. Just whatever. There's nothing too big for God to accomplish for you. Just bless yourself abundantly, lavishly, crazily. Bless yourself according to His words and His heart. Don't be shy to bless yourself. Bless it. Just keep blessing yourself. You make us very happy. There's one more thing on the PowerPoint. I just showed it, the, the bottom one. So you bless, I bless myself having the right heart, strength, resource to do the right things in the right season with the right people. That, that means move forward to your calling and destiny. That is very, very important. You got to. Otherwise, you can like have a very good life, but you actually stop. You get stuck here. Okay, so moving forward. Bless yourself that you can move forward. So God, I bless myself having the right heart, strength, resources to do the right things in the right season with the right people. Okay? Can you do that to yourself? That's very important. God, keep doing new things. He wants us to move forward. There are so many good things, good plans ahead of us. So just keep moving. Ask God, God, bless me. So I can move forward with your blessing in the right season with the right people. And I have the strength, the heart, the resources to do the right thing. Jesus. 
So let's read this. This is a, a prayer recorded in the Bible. It's a very short prayer, but extremely powerful. Okay, so let's read this together, okay? Is it Je Jebez? Okay. Jebez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his, this name Jebez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, so that it might not bring me pain. And God granted what he asked. Okay, so this, this guy, Jabez, okay, doesn't come out right for some reason, so cause his mom. Tremendous pain. And in that day, tremendous pain meaning tremendous danger because it's ancient. Okay, the medical condition, everything is not great. However, he called upon God with this short prayer. And then God, the Bible says he's more honorable than his brothers. Okay? And God granted him. So would you just, those bold um, words, can you just use that to bless yourself? Okay? So... Oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hands might be with me, and that you will keep me from harm, so that it might not bring me pain. Okay, can you just lay hand on yourself, any part? Okay, do that again, like, so. Oh, that you will bless me. One last time, okay. Oh, that you will bless me. Deep love pouring out and filling up my shell. Okay, another example from from Bible, Aaron's prayer. Let's read it together. The Lord bless me and keep me. The Lord make his face to shine upon me and be gracious to me. The Lord lift up his countenance upon me and give me peace. And then you can use you when you pray for others. One last time. The Lord bless me and keep me. The Lord make his face to shine upon me and be gracious to me. The Lord lift up his countenance upon me and give me peace. Okay, use those things to bless you. Okay, now it's the time you bless others. Same thing, the emotion. Okay, so can we just walk around this room and find somebody and just bless? And just, you don't need to ask him what you need to bless him for. Just, just bless. Whatever God put into your heart, just bless him. Emotion, relationship, health, family, whatever. And then also that he will move forward to his or her calling and destiny. Okay. So just move around, move around. Find somebody you know or you don't know. It's okay.
Um, and then we can use the last about three, five minutes. Let's bless the English ministry and bless our church. And if you can, you can bless God's kingdom. Okay, you can bless any particular pastor, missionary, leaders, co-workers, or any churches that in your mind or ministries in your mind or any, any, yeah, any, um, anything. Just bless. Give thanks for everything that God bless you through this ministry or through the church or even other ministries, not, not here specific, any other ministry. Just thank God and bless them, bless them. This is a time God wants to enlarge your tent. When you pray for church, for leaders, for his kingdom, that is how he enlarges your, your tent. Oh, we since most of us we are two, two by two. So, can we just bless an English ministry from family groups, and then to Bernea, this young profession, single, or about to marry, and then our youth. I think you notice we have a lot of you. We just ask God this year we are going to use our mouth to draw more blessing, already in His heart anyway, to draw more blessing upon us. So he will glorify us, and we will in turn glorify him. So we bless the youth. We just bless the youth, bless Benea, and bless the family group. Father, we expect that blessing beyond our imagination. Whether it's material or like spiritual blessing, Father, we want to have.
let's use this song as a very, very beautiful song to just adore him and thank him and then to, to really allow him to come closer to us. Father, we ask you to create more hunger in us. Your presence will heal us, strengthen us, comfort us, protect us, and guide us. Father, throughout this year, we declare that an English ministry, family group, Vanea, and youth, every one of us will continue live in this tent, live in the tabernacle that you created for us. Thank you for willing to live among us. Father, we want to be your people. Come, come, instruct us. Hey, Jesus, won't you come and dress me in your thoughts? out your favorite ones I'm holding out my heart you cover gray empty space with color from your will deep love pouring out and filling up my shell you come and cover me in light illuminate the dark space with color yellow bright like the stars coming out and filling up my night the says you make wrong things right oh you make wrong things right beautiful Jesus my glorious friend the one who never grows weary and stays G 
Father, we want to thank you for calling us forth to celebrate, to observe the Feast of Tabernacle. Thank you for just stop us to think deeper about your heart, your plan, your blessing for us. Father, I pray over the entire English ministry that every one of us will do the right thing in this season with the right people. Father, that everyone here will move forward with the good plan you have for us. Father, we thank you for promise to keep us to provide, to protect us. So, Father, I ask you to give us the wisdom to pray the right prayer. Release the time so we can gather with my friends, my family, my spouse, our children, or even friends. We can count your blessing together. We can share our story together. And we can also share the harvest that you give it to us by being very generous to you and to others. And I ask that the Holy Spirit will visit us, whether in our workplace or in our own house or even while we are driving. Father, your presence is so close. Just help us to open our heart and eyes towards you. So today, Father, we re receive your love. Your feast is a sign that you love us and you want to bless us even more. Father, we thank you. Thank you for everything that you share and instruct us this morning. I pray that every one of us will be kept by you. Whether the, even the people that are not here, Father, they will still live in your mercy, your presence, your blessing. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So have a very, very blessed week.